In the previous video, I went over the basic functions and components of the Studio Pro Dynelight Flash Generator. In this video, I will go over how to actually use these components and some examples when doing so. One of the main points to get away from this video is that when using the Visionary Digital Imaging System, lighting is an extremely important part of that, and a huge part of your lighting is using the Dynalight. So this is a very important piece of equipment, and when taking pictures, you should utilize this equipment to your advantage to have the best possible picture that you can. I'll go over the four main functions and their individual components and using them. And at the end, I'll briefly talk about the miscellaneous function. At the bottom left-hand corner of the Dynalight, we have our main power switch. And to turn it on, you simply flip the switch on. And notice that all the lights have now turned on and you can hear the fan working. We're going to just turn it off for now so we can hear a little bit better. For our next function, which was the connections to extraneous hardware, we have our main power source at the top of the Dynalight. This connects to any wall outlet, and unless you're moving your equipment to a new location, you don't need to unplug it, so that can be left alone. The same applies for your sync connection, which connects your lighting equipment to your camera system. Pretty much that should always be left plugged in and you shouldn't have to worry about it unless it's been unplugged. At the top we have our four head outlet which allows to have a maximum of four lights connected to the Dynalay at any one time. To actually connect a light you have your power outlet and as you notice there's a white stripe at the top and there's some little bumps and grooves on the side. To plug it in, you simply line the white stripe so it's facing towards the top of the down light, line up the grooves, and you simply push it in. Any of your power cords for any of your lights, they will connect to any head outlet, so it doesn't matter really which one you plug it into. However, if you're using more than one light in your imaging process, you need to separate your lights between the left and right hand sides of the dyna light. For example, the way we have it set up now, one of our lights is attached to one of the two left hand head outlets and one of the lights is attached to one of the two right head outlets. For our function of our lighting intensity control, once again we have our two main power switches, power switch A and power switch B. A controlling the two head outlets on the left hand side of the dyna light with B controlling the two head outlets on the right hand side of the dyna light. So now we'll just go ahead and turn the dyna light on. For our two main power switches, each individual switch has the options for full, quarter and half intensity, full being the highest, quarter being the lowest, and half being in the middle. Notice when the power switch is turned to full, the light above it becomes a reddish-orange color, and when you turn it to quarter, that light turns green. And when it's on half, the light is a combination between the two other colors. Later on in the video, I will go over examples of using the different combinations in your lighting intensity and how it relates to the images that you take. But for now, we're going to go over the other components within this function. We have our variator knob, and currently it's turned to full, which is the highest intensity. Now, our variator knob, it helps us have more minute control over our intensity than what is possible with just your power switches alone. For example, we'll have both of our power switches at quarter. This is the lowest intensity combination. But if the image that we took was still a little too bright, then to decrease our intensity, we can simply turn the, the variator knob clockwise, which will decrease our intensity. Typically, you only want to turn the variator knob down once or twice each time that you take a sample picture. Just to make sure you don't completely overshoot it and have to go back anyways. A thing to remember is each time that you turn the variator knob down, there's additional energy still within your light, and you need to bump that energy 
by pressing the ready test button. This will cause your lights to flash and that will release that extra energy. So even if you turn it down once, you still need to press the ready test button to bump that extra energy. However, if you turn the variator knob up to increase your intensity, you do not need to press the ready test button. Next, we have a ratio combine button with combine being our symmetrical function and ratio being our asymmetrical function. For the vast majority of the images that you will take, you will be using the combine function. Notice when you turn the switch to ratio, the light underneath turns off. But pretty much all the time when you're taking pictures, you will just be using combine. Now we're going to go ahead and take some example images. I'm going to just show the Dynalite still, but I'll add an image of what it will look like when you take a picture using these intensities. We have our intensity switches at full and full for both, and our variator knob is at the highest intensity. So we go ahead, take a picture, and as you can see, the image is fairly bright. This image has a high intensity. So we're going to go ahead and take another picture and this time we're going to have our combination of full and half. And it doesn't matter which one's full and which one's half because we have the combined function on. All of our lighting equipment will have equal intensity. So we go ahead, take our picture and as you can see the image has become somewhat darker even though it's still fairly bright. So now. If you turn it to half and half, as you can see, the images are still becoming darker. So we go ahead and do half and quarter, and we take our picture. This picture is the darkest yet. And finally, we're going to go to quarter and quarter. This is the lowest intensity combination. And when we take this picture, this is a very dark picture. But just to show you what happens when you use the variator knob, I'm going to turn it down twice, going to bump that energy, and then I'm going to take another picture. Now, as you can see, even though quarter and quarter was the lowest intensity combination between the two power switches, when you turn the variator knob down, that makes your image darker still. That's an example of actually taking pictures and the different combinations that you can use. For our function of our lighting equipment controls, we have our dimmer slide switches and our model delay. Our dimmer slide switches, they simply turn your lights on and off when they're not in use for taking pictures. A nice trick for using these is when they're on, you can visually get an idea of the lighting intensity of what your picture will end up being. For example, if you take a sample picture and it seems like the image is fairly dark or it seems like the specimen has an area that's overexposed, it's very bright, you can go ahead and turn off one of your lights and while using the cam lift and the live view function, you can visually see if that light is making that spot become overexposed. If that's the light that's causing that problem, you can go ahead and physically move that light before taking an image. When taking your stacked images, you want to go ahead and just turn both of your lights off to help prevent your system from crashing. The model delay when turn off, your lights will flash and immediately turn back on again. But if it's on, for example, we're going to use four. When we take a picture, there's a four second pause between when your lights flash and when they turn back on again. When the lights are off, there's a four second pause between when your camera is taking the pictures. For our miscellaneous functions, the one that you might use is the audible ready indicator, which is right below your main power switch. When your lights are recharged and they're ready to take another picture, you'll hear a beeping sound. But it's not necessary for the Dynalite to function, so you can just turn it off. And that's how you use the Studio Pro Dynalite Flash Generator.